Come on, New Jerusalem. Who came here tonight to be revived? Who came to give God some glory? Come on, well, we, we didn't come all the way over here to sit down. We came to lift him up. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. I need some folk that don't mind doing the lifting so he can do the drawing. Is there anybody in the house that don't mind just giving him about 30 seconds of some serious, uninterrupted praise? It's just, I'll just praise him. I, I'm like David, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And who in the building don't mind blessing? Come on, everybody, make one big choir. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, one accord. Every praise. Come on, everybody. Praise to our God. Every word of worship, one accord. Every praise. Every praise. God, our Savior, God, our healer, God, our deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, God, our Savior, God, our healer, God, our deliverer, yes, he is. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Oh, somebody ought to hear, and he ought to bless the Lord with me. For he is good. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, take your seats if you will. Take your seats. Hallelujah. What a time, what a time when all of God's children gets together. What a time. I'm so excited to be in the house tonight. In the new house. <laughs> in the big house. I'm so grateful to my brother, to my friend. Preacher par excellent. I am so excited for you, New Jerusalem. You ought to give yourselves a hand clap of praise. God Almighty. We serve a God that has done great things. And is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same. He's worthy to be praised. First of all, I just want to thank you for allowing me to come and to be with you tonight on this auspicious occasion, uh, the three night of revival, and I have the task of trying to close this thing out, <laughs> amen. Uh, but my Bible said, he who has begun a good work is able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, so I am uh, excited about this opportunity to share a word with you tonight. I want to thank my brother and my pastor friend, uh, Brother Elijah, Pastor Elijah Collins, who is my dear friend. Um, as he mentioned, uh, we, are, we came up on the opposite sides of town. He came up on the east side. And yep, you guessed it. I came up on the west side. And I heard a little birdie tell me, Pastor, the west side is the best side. 
I don't know about that, but I'm grateful to be here tonight with my Romy. That's what I call it, my Romy, because we from Rome. So we got a little Romy thing going on. Amen. But he is truly a blessing. Amen. Good to see the first lady of the house tonight. Thank you so much. I know it was a tastic bit, bit here tonight. Amen. Uh, but what a blessing it is to see your face. It is good to see all of you tonight. It is good to be seen and not viewed. Can I get a witness in the building? Um, it is indeed an honor to be in God's house with God's children. I want to say uh, greetings to my deacon, Deacon Arnold Harris, my deacon chair who came all the way from Fairburn, Georgia, amen, to be with us tonight, amen. So I'm grateful, sir, amen, that you were able to make it, amen. You know, this Atlanta traffic will test you. <laughs> if you ain't saved, <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. You better be saved in this Atlanta traffic. God Almighty. Yes, Lord, you got to repent in this traffic. Y'all know what I'm talking to. Somebody been around 285 a couple of times. Yes, Lord. Amen. I, uh, I, I want to um, bring greetings from Cornerstone Community Church Atlanta, uh, where we are south downtown and we are just, I'm grateful to be here today, and um, I want to also bring greetings from my first lady, First Lady Jaquetta Watkins, who, as uh, Pastor alluded to earlier, she is an educator as well, and um, she had three folk that got promoted to new jobs, and then one person, a man, was not able to make it to work, so that means that the boss lady had to go and fill in, amen, and so uh, she brings her regrets that she could not be here today uh, coming from downtown, amen. You know that is a Herculean effort, amen, amen. But she does come, amen, and send, she sends her blessings on tonight, amen. Good to see, um, amen. Sister Harris from Cornerstone, wave at us, Sister Harris, amen. This is my godmother, amen, and, and I am indeed blessed to have her in my life, a mighty, mighty, mighty woman of God. Amen. It was because of her I accepted my calling to the ministry. Amen. She took me under her arms and reintroduced Jesus all over again. And for that, I am indeed grateful. I don't want to belabor the hour tonight because a pastor didn't call me up here to do all these pleasantries. He said, preach. Amen. Um, to all of the officers and the ushers and to all of you, thank you once again for allowing me to be here. But there is a word from the Lord tonight. And somebody came for a word. Amen. And I came all the way from Ellenwood, Georgia to bring you a word tonight. Now, if you pray for me and I'm going to pray for you. We're going to make it through this thing tonight. And we're going to pray that the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit would rain down on us tonight like never before. I know you like preaching. That's why you're here. Amen. Uh, you couldn't be, uh, couldn't like preaching and love preaching without being under this pastor. Amen. So, the, so it says, uh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We're going to make a joyful noise tonight. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to find the most difficult book in the Bible. That's the book of Genesis. Amen. If you can't find Genesis, good gracious alive. Amen. I'm going to make it easy on you tonight. Amen. Genesis chapter 12. We're going to journey to verse number one, if you will. Genesis chapter 12, number one. I kind of feel like preaching tonight. 
Amen. Now, if y'all one of them quiet churches, it's going to be long and painful. Amen. Amen. I know I'm at home. Amen. I know I'm at home. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say hold up. All right. Genesis chapter 12, beginning at verse number 1, and it reads as follows. Now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 4 says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in Haram. They departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to, place, to the place called Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Moray. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Verse 7 says, Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord and he, and who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called, the, called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. I want to back up the verse number eight, if you will. Just back up just a little bit. And he says, and he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there... He built an altar to the Lord. I want to talk very quickly from the between blessings and messes. Between blessings and messes. Pray with me, if you will. Father, we thank you tonight for the time of preaching is now upon us. God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for the training. Father, I'm asking now, Lord, that you would now hide your, your servant Watkins behind the cross where all grace abounds. Father, God, decrease me as you now increase all of you and none of me. Father, God, I'm asking that you now, God, would use these lips of clay and this heart of flesh, Lord, to, uh, to do your blessed will tonight. Father, have thy own way and revive these your people tonight. Father God, lift them up, God. Shake them, oh God. Father God, shake them upside down, if you will, God. But Lord, no matter how we came in, we don't want to leave the same. Father, have your way in this place like never before. God, we'll never ever forget to give you the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. It is in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we thank you. And all of God's children said, amen. Ushers, you may be seated Amen. In his presence. Thank you so much for your service tonight. My, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk again from this topic between blessings and messes. Uh, when we go to this chapter here in chapter 12 of Genesis, we begin to find a man that a story about a man and a woman, one named Abram and Sarai. Uh, God uh, speaks to them in their familiar place. He speaks to them in a place where they were raised. They, you must understand that, that uh, Abram was raised in an area, an area or a territory called the Ur of Chaldees. Uh, in this place, uh, Abram had developed uh, quite a bit of, of, of wealth and resources, the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that he was blessed 
the Bible tells us that he, God, had shown favor on him. However, uh, in chapter 12, God comes to Abram and he speaks to him. He speaks to him and he gives him a command. He says, now, Abram, I, I want you to leave your familiar place. I want you to leave this place uh, that you call home. And I wanna, want you to go to a place that I'm going to show you. Uh, the, the interesting thing about it is, is that God did, did tell uh, Abram to, to leave his familiar place. However, God did not tell him exactly where he was going. Are y'all with me in here tonight? The, the Bible says that he, uh, he tells him to leave his place of familiarity, to leave his hometown, keeping in mind that now uh, that Abram is a wealthy man, uh, amen, and he has a network where he lives. Are y'all with me here? Uh -huh. People knew Abram. They knew him from his father, Terah, amen, and he had a reputation uh, from where he was from, but God reaches out to him and he taps him on the shoulder and say, Abram, I need you to leave the place that you call home and I need, to, need you to go to a place that I'm going to show you. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about that because there, there's a few things that we need to be able to extract from the text because there is some very important details that we must find here. First, we need to understand that Abram was not alone. Abram was a married man. Are y'all praying with me here? Abram, the Bible tells us, was a man married to a woman named Sarai at this time. And, and Abram, amen, the name Abram means, uh, it means blessed father. Are y'all with me here? In the Hebrew, the name Abram means blessed father. Uh, are y'all praying with me tonight? Uh -huh. And then the Bible says, now, however, he was already blessed. Are y'all with me here? His name in the, it even indicated that he was a blessed man. Uh -huh. But the Bible says that God says, now, Abram, I need you to leave from where you are to a place that I'm going to show you. Now, I got a, few, a little difficulty. Can I just keep it real with y'all tonight? I, I have a few a, a, a difficulty with the command of God here because uh, if you were like me and you married to a sister, are y'all talking to me tonight? Uh -huh. The last thing that you want to do is to come home and talk about we got to move uh, and you don't have any details. Are y'all going to talk to me tonight? The last thing that you want to do with a sister at home is to say, baby, we got to move. The next question, obviously, from her is going to be, Y'all, y'all, there's some sisters in the house. Uh, you, you already know how this is scripted out. Could you imagine being Abram, getting a command from God to pull up from where he's from, pull up from his land of familiarity, to go to a place where there, he does not know where he's going? Are y'all with me tonight? Uh -huh. He's a wealthy man, so now you need to understand that his wealth was tied to the region in which he was, where he lived. Are y'all with me here? But God is telling him, he said, I need you to pull up, Abram, and go to a land that I'm going to show you. Uh -huh. And then he's, 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 he's also got to leave some family. You got to read the text. It wasn't a whole lot of folk that got up and left with Abram. The Bible says that it was Abram and Sarah, and it also talked about Lot and his wife and his son-in-law. Well, the ones that got up and left with him, now keep it in mind uh, that God now is sending Abram out to a new land. But at the, at the, at the end of the day, uh, everybody that God, everybody that, that, that was go, trying to go with Abram, amen, some folk had to stay behind. Are y'all praying with me tonight? How many of us realize that when God calls you out? When God calls you out for something, how many know there are going to be some times when you got to leave some folk behind? Y'all not going to talk to me tonight. I, I know I'm trying to talk to somebody that's been somewhere with God. God had to pull you up out of a familiar place, send you to a new spot, but you found out that some folk that had been hanging with you were not going to be able to make the trip where you were going. Am I talking all right tonight? 
is there anybody in here that when God uh, started pulling you into a new direction, uh, when he started blessing you in a different way, uh, is there anybody in the building uh, that can testify that, that God uh, caused some folk to fall off? Uh, is there anybody in the building? Y'all not talking to me. Is there anybody in this building tonight uh, that can testify uh, that because I took up my cross, because I went in the way of God, uh, I lost some folk along the way. Can I even go a little bit deeper? There are even some times when you're going to lose some close family and some close friends uh, when you... Here it is. Abram had to pull up out of Earl Chaldees, going to a place that he did not know where he was going. Uh huh. And too often of a time, we forfeit the supernatural, settling for the natural. Are y'all praying with me here? If you want some supernatural blessings, you're going to have to forfeit some natural stuff. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Is there anybody in here that had to sacrifice a few things in your... That, that's the reason why this place ain't packed. That's the reason why everybody didn't show up tonight. It's because sometimes you got to sacrifice your Friday night so that you can have a Sunday morning. Am I talking all right up in here? Sometimes you got to sacrifice some of the things that you want to do so that you can get what God has for you. Am I talking to you tonight? night. If it's all, if it's, if I'm not talking to you, it's all right if you throw up your hand. I just want you to know that every now and again, we need to understand that God will, he will check you to see how bad do you want it. Sometimes he will not lay up your blessing in a, in a convenient place. He will not bless you in your spiritual lazy boy. Sometimes you got to get to a place where you fall down prostrate when you fall down on your knees God will bless you when he see you look a little crazy for him can I help you a little bit here the Bible tells us in verse number 5 watch this I need you to see this it says here he says listen Abram he said uh he said, I, I, want you to, I want you to see this in the text. He says, he said, now I, I'm going to make you a great nation. I, I, I'm going to make your name great, Abram. Uh -huh. He said, but, but, I, but I love this part because uh, he, he says, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you. Uh -huh. but, but I had to do a little work in this here, my Pastor. I mean, because uh, the, the, this word bless or blessings, amen, comes from the Hebrew word baraka. Are y'all with me here? Uh -huh, but it don't mean what y'all think it means. Are y'all with me? Uh -huh, this word baraka in the Hebrew, uh, it actually means uh, to kneel down. Are y'all praying with me tonight? In other words, uh, I'm getting ready to take you in the place uh, that I'm going to cause you to kneel down. <laughs> y'all not hearing me tonight. Uh, I'm going to take you in places uh, that's going to have the only way you're going to make it, Pastor, uh, is that you got to kneel down. <laughs> Are y'all praying with me in here? <laughs> See, the reason why uh, the church don't have such a praise anymore uh, because we ain't got enough folk uh, that's willing to be barakad. <laughs> They're not willing to uh, be blessed. Uh, They're not willing to kneel down. Uh, see, you got to lay down before the Lord. Uh, some things ain't going to happen while you standing up. Uh, some things ain't going to happen while uh, your eyes are open. Uh, sometimes you got to lay out uh, before the Lord. Uh, if you want some of this, uh, God said, I'm going to bless you. Uh, but it's going to require you to kneel down. got to kneel down. Tell your neighbor you got to kneel down. Uh-huh. Watch this. This is what I loved here. Uh, the Bible tells us in the text that he's taking him from Earl Chaldees and he's taking him now identified in verse number five to a land called Canaan. Uh-huh. Now Canaan, the name Canaan in the Hebrew 
It actually means the land of promise. Uh huh. The land of promise. Do y'all say say the land of promise? See, God wanted to take him from uh, his comfortable place to a land of promise. Are y'all praying with me tonight? Uh huh. But but the Bible now tells us now that when he goes, he's on his way to this land of promise. He had a few problems that he had to encounter. Can I just take a pause right here? Can I parenthetically pause? Because many of us, we get excited about the promises of God. But what we don't realize is that when God gives you a problem, a promise, it often oftentimes comes with a problem. Y'all not talking to me. Can I talk to a few married folk? You've been trying to get married all of your life. You finally found your boo. You got your boo. But you then came to find out that every now and again you have to go through some problems. Am I t- y'all not talking to me tonight? Uh-huh. Well, can I talk to somebody in here? Do you know we got we done come from the country? We done got a couple of dollars in our pocket. Uh-huh. When you get a little wealth in your pocket, that's that's the promise, right? Didn't God promise us that he was going to bless us? Uh-huh. You got the house you wanted. You got the car. You got the children. But in every now and again, you got to go through some problems. Don't get too much wealth and let April 15th roll around and you got to pay the IRS y'all not hearing me you gonna find out you got a few problems you might not be able to pay the church you might not pay your tithes you might not pay your bills but I tell you one thing that's one person you gonna pay and that's called the IRS am I talking to anybody up in here how many realize that even in promises God often laces our promises with a problem every now and again God will allow a problem to come up God God gave you this building pastor but he didn't give you this building without some few problems am I talking all right in here in New Jerusalem am I talking all right it's all right to bless God for the promises but can you bless him when the problem shows up are you faithful enough and do you have enough praise in the tank to be able to praise him when the problem shows up the land of promise came with a little problem am I talking all right tonight Uh yes there are times when you got to uh, learn how to handle your problems that's the reason why the church ain't filled because they get all giddy when they get saved salvation comes look like it comes cheap but sanctification Y'all not talking to me. Y'all not going to talk to me. Sanctification comes with a problem. Y'all not know what I'm talking about. Sanctification means that I got to learn how to love folk that's hard to love. I got to be able to hang in there in the church when I have a little church hurt. Am I talking to somebody tonight? I got to be able to hang in there when I don't necessarily agree with the pastor, but I love him and I'm going to trust the God in him I'm going to trust that so therefore because I know how to kneel down if I time up I'm not worried about the problems I'm worried about the one who sent him and the one who commissioned him and the one who will correct him well you better preach tonight that's why everybody can't hang around in the church. See, they like the promise of salvation, but they don't like it when the problem comes. They don't like it when pastor talk, start talking about we need to raise some money. Boy, you better preach, man. See, we got the tithing folk in here tonight. Uh-huh. See, this is what pastor, this is what's called the core. Are y'all with me here? The car is where the apple grows. Are y'all with me here? Because in the car is where the seed is. 
good God Almighty in here. But God, I'm going to tell you, Pastor, don't tell them I told you this. But come Sunday, you're going to get the meat and the skin. Are y'all praying with me here? They just cover the car and they just hide the seed. But they don't cause it to grow. Are y'all praying with me tonight? That's the reason why we're here. It's because we are the remnant of God. Because we believe him. A little traffic ain't going to scare us off. A little late night hour ain't going to scare us off. We came here because we know who he is. And sometimes you got to be like the woman with the issue of blood. I ain't going to worry about this. I can't worry about protocol. I can't worry about the men. I can't worry about what this one said and that one said. But if I can yet touch. Sometimes you got to get desperate. Desperation will drive you to your Canaan. It will drive you to your blessing. How do you know? Because it is when you have been pushed to desperation that you now kneel down. Let me, let me hurry up and get out of here. I know y'all about tired of me. Ooh Good God Almighty. Look at this. I want you to see this though. Because now we, we, we see in the text, amen, that Abram now has left his home place. He left Earl Chaldees. He's now headed, amen, to the promised land. Amen. Canaan is where they say it. Amen. But but however, amen, the Bible says this is what got me, Pastor. Amen. He says in verse number eight, amen, it tells us that then and then Abram, amen, he moved from where he was and he pinched a tit. Good God. Holy Ghost, help me out here. The Bible says that he pinched his tent, watch this, between Bethel and I. Are y'all with me here? Uh huh. Uh, the, the, the Bible says uh, that he pitched his his tent between uh, Bethel and I. That's what it says. Did y'all see that? Uh huh. Well, let me say this now, uh, because the, the word Bethel in the Hebrew, uh, the word Bethel means uh, it, it, it means uh, a place of blessing. Are y'all talking to me tonight? Uh, he he pitched his tent between uh, a place of blessing uh, and the Bible says in a place called I. Uh, the word I now uh, means a place of ruin. Uh, are y'all playing with me here tonight? Uh, the Bible says that he put his tent uh, in the middle uh, uh -huh, between a place of blessing uh, and a place of ruin. Uh, has anybody in here, uh, God has blessed you, uh, but every now and again uh, you end up in a mess with the blessings that God has blessed you with. Am I talking to anybody in here tonight that you had to learn how to handle a mess with the blessings that God has blessed you with? Am I talking to somebody in here tonight that God did do what he said he was going to do but it did come with a mess? Are y'all talking to me in here? Yes, every now and again you got to learn how to take a note from Abram's book and learn how to handle your blessings even when it leads you to a mess. Am I talking all right in here tonight? I need somebody to know that every now and again you need to realize just because you bless don't mean that you escape some of the issues that comes along with your blessing. That's the reason why people are falling off from you. That's the reason why folk won't return your phone call. That's the reason why you're texting, but you're not getting a return text back. Because every now and then, God will bless you, but your bless with blessings can come with a little mess. Can I talk about it a little bit? Come in, Job. Would you come to New Jerusalem? Job's in the building, y'all. And the Bible says that Job was a righteous man. Job was a blessed man. One of the wealthiest men in the east side. Am I talking all right in here? But every now and again, God has to interrupt that to see how you're going to handle
people, your blessings. How can he trust you from the glory where you are to the new glory that he's taking you to? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? New Jerusalem, I stopped by to tell you tonight that this revival is about you recognizing that you're already blessed. But don't mess up where you're going because you run through a little mud every now and again. Don't you let the devil trick you in believing that your promises won't come with a problem every now and again. You got to know how to work through your problems, how to work through the mud, how to work through your issues because I got to keep on going. I can't let nobody who don't know where I'm going. You don't know my story and you can't tell my glory. Is there anybody in here that can recognize tonight that tonight is a night that your new glory is about to fall down on you. But you got to understand with every new level comes a new devil. So don't you quit now where God is trying to take you because God loves you but he's going to see you through every step of the way. I got three points and then I'm going to get up out of here. I got three points. Three points. Can y'all take these three for me? Then I'm going to go take my seat. Number one, amen, when you are between blessings and messes, you got to learn to don't, don't get satisfied in an unsanctified place. You can't get satisfied in an unsanctified place. I, I need you to get this. See, don't set up a house where God told you to pitch a tent. Are y'all with me tonight? I, I, listen, I ain't here to judge nobody because life can be difficult and can put you in some places that you really don't want to be in. Can I talk to that crew in here? Is there anybody in, in, in here tonight that say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I'm between a blessing and a mess. I, I know I ain't quite where I used to be, but I ain't quite where I want to be. I need to talk to those folk tonight. Is anybody in, that, in the building that's kind of caught between two places you ain't quite there yet but you far from where you used to be uh -huh. I need you to understand when God has commissioned you for something don't put a period where God told you to put a comma see oftentimes we set up permanency amen in a place that God says was temporary are y'all praying with me tonight? Yes, I know you might be from Bankhead. Yeah, I know you might be from the hood. But that ain't mean you got to stay there. That don't mean you got to... I understand that you came off the rough side of the mountain. But you ain't got to stay on that side. There is another side of the mountain. Does anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? I know I'm a little loud. And I'm a little noisy. But I got to make a joyful noise tonight. Because I came all the way from Bankhead to Ellenwood all the way up here. And I didn't come in here from no Presbyterian church. I didn't come for the Episcopalian church. I came for a church that said, God, I'm going to, for you, I'm going to live. And for you, I'm going to die. In the hood, we used to say, holly if you hear me. If you hear me, you need to holler back. See, some places are for an experience and not for eternity. See, they ain't wasn't permanent for you. See, you know, yes, I, I understand we had a hoopty, but God didn't die for us to just stay in the hoopty. No, no, I, I ain't talking about, I, I ain't trying to be all prosperity preaching and all of that. But I, the last I checked, Jesus said out of his mouth, he, he said, I died that you might have life and life more abundantly. Since we down here and since we got to go through hell and high water, we might as well get something. We might as well go ahead and set up the kingdom since that's where we going anyhow. That's what he said, isn't he? He said, I go to prepare place for you and where I go you shall go also in my father's house there are many
many mansions there. Y'all not talking to me tonight. So since I might not have my, the big mansion, I might might set up a nice penthouse down here. Are y'all praying with me in here? So don't sit here and stop your blessing because you're trying to be poor. Because God did not come for us to crowd out the poor ranks. He came that I did. He would be lifted up. How you gonna lift him up when you don't? Y'all don't even have a step stool. Let me hurry on. I got two more points, and I'm gonna get away from here. I Men don't get satisfied in an unsanctified place. Number two, you got to learn how to praise in progress. You got to learn how to praise in progress. Amen. The, the, the Bible lets us know that, uh, that Abram pitched his tent between two places. He wasn't quite where he needed to be. But he set up an altar there. Y'all not talking to me tonight. The altar where he could worship God. The altar where he could talk to God. The altar where he could commune with God. The altar where he can worship God and praise God. Are y'all with me tonight? And when your worship is real, you don't have to be in a perfect place to praise God. Are y'all praying with me here? You can learn how to praise God in the middle of the situation. Your part, your marriage ain't got to be perfect for you to praise God. When you, I dare you tonight, when it get a little cool tonight, even if your spouse ain't in the bed it's better when you roll over on the cool side of the bed it'll make you appreciate having somebody next to you can I be it all right tonight you might not have you might not have the car that you want but you can turn on some 102.5 and you can still praise him with the little old car that you got am I talking all right tonight you might not have the penthouse yet but you can appraise him in your apartment are y'all talking to me here you don't have to learn how to praise him in progress I know God has a promise it came with a little problem but I'm gonna praise him anyhow because he's good like that does anybody know what I'm talking about and I've learned how to praise God for where I'm going even though I hadn't gotten there yet is there anybody in the building that's praising him we're praising him in progress it might not be perfect but I can give God some praise anyhow I can wave my hand and say God I thank you for doing what you did for me God it might not be everything that I wanted but you didn't have to do that grace and mercy has brought me thus far and I can praise him with the little bit that I got but if you wait until I get everything that God has for me. I'm going to be like David. I'm going to dance out my clothes. I might embarrass somebody, but you can't stop my praise. Here it is, last point. And I'm going to get on out of here. Third thing that we learn when we between blessings and messes is you got to learn how to wear your tag when you live in between blessings and messes. You say, what kind of tag, Pastor? You got to learn how to pray. Well, you got to learn how to wear your swag tag. Y'all not talking to me. How, what swag tag? See, swag stands for shout with Almighty God. You got to know how to shout with him uh -huh, when you're walking through. I wish I had some of my young folk in here because they know my boy Rich Homie Quan. He said, I got to walk through. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You got to know how to walk with a swag when you walk through. You, you got to know how. You got to know how to look good when you're walking through. I may not have it all, but I still got my swag when I'm walking through. Y'all not talking to me tonight. I wish I had a few folk that, that, that turn to the other channel and know how to walk through through the valley.
worthy of the shadow of death. And you ain't got to fear no evil because the God that we serve is with us. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Every now and again, when the devil comes to take it down, you got to open up your swag tag and say, listen, devil, you don't know who I belong to. Let me show you my tag. Is anybody in here that got your swag tag while you're walking through? While you're in between a blessing and a mess, you got to know how to wear your tag. You got to still walk with your swag walk. You got to be able to shout with Almighty God, not because of where you are, but because of where God is taking you. And I'm getting ready to take my seat, y'all. I promise I'm not going to trouble you any longer. But I recall a man that came and he was the promise. The Bible says in Philippians 2 that he vacated all of his divine privileges. He put on a flesh. He put on a flesh like this. Had a little kinky hat like mine. Eyes like, like, like fire. Feet like brass. Walked on this earth three and a half years. He was the promise that the world had been looking for. But how many recognize that he had a few problems when he got down here? He had to learn how to pray for folk who scandalized his name. He had to learn. He had to learn how to deal with folk that's hard to deal with. You hear me, Pastor? He had to learn how to be stabbed in the back and spit in his face. But the Bible says that one one Friday, the promise picked up his cross, took it up Galgopas Hill. Oh, y'all not talking to me. When he got up there, the Bible says they hung him high and they stretched him wide. And then the devil thought they had nailed the promise to the cross. But how many know that early one Sunday morning, good God Almighty in here, the Bible said that my promise got up set all the captives free went down in Abraham's bosom took the keys to death, hell and destruction opened up the door opened up and told all of Abraham's bosom to empty out and the Bible said that he got up with all power in his hand don't you worry about the being between your blessings and your messes because every now and then your promise will come with a problem but it will come with providential power that same power that got Jesus up from the grave is the same power that dunamis power that's a Greek word Azusia power that's another Greek word that stands for dynamite power that power that when you learn how to praise them like Paul and Silas how many know that God will break you out between your blessings and your messes would you just high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor just hang on in there just because you're between your blessings and your messes don't mean that God's promise is not going to be not going to materialize in your life is there anybody in here that will bless the Lord with me because just because because you are where you are. God stopped me by to tell you that he still loves you. That he's going to show you how to make it through your blessings and your messes. I don't feel always tired because I've come too far to turn around now. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Is there anybody in the building that'll bless him just for a couple of seconds in the middle of it, in the middle of your blessings and your messes?
Don't let the devil rob you. Because a few problems came along with your problems. Sometimes you got to learn how to sing your way out your problems. Sometimes you got to learn how to praise him in the middle of it. Knowing that I know my Redeemer lives. And he will do what he said he's going to do. Every now and again, you got to say, I don't feel no waste time. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy oh lord i don't believe he brought me this far to leave me come on deacon harris i need you to lift them up no way time lord i come too far from where i started from what I like about it. Nobody told me oh, that the road would be easy. Lord, I don't believe, I don't believe. Yeah. I don't believe we gotta go. I don't believe it. How many had heartaches and pains sometimes? How many burdens been heavy sometimes? Had to cry sometime in the midnight hour. But I don't believe it. Sometime I had to moan when I couldn't get nothing to go right in my life. I don't believe, I don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe. Listen. I don't feel no waste time. I come this far from where. Nobody told me that the road would be here. I don't believe you brought me. Lord, I don't believe. Had to cry sometimes. Is there one in this building tonight? Oh, I don't believe. While you're standing on your feet. If you don't know Jesus and the free pardons of your sins. Don't believe. I want to extend an offer to you. Lord, I don't. The best offer that you'll ever receive. If you're in this building and you've not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Tonight we can fix that. With the confession of your faith. Believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord and he's Savior. And that he's coming back again for you. If you would have the faith to believe that tonight. The Bible says you can be saved. So tonight, I don't want you to think about your church record. I want you to think about your Christ relationship. If you don't have that relationship with Christ. We extend Jesus Christ to you tonight. Is there one inside the building? 
If you're saved in this building, you know you're saved. Would you just lift your hand in the air? Everybody that's saved in this place. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, praise the Lord in this place. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tarnese Watkins, for telling us how to live between blessings and messes. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I needed these three nights. Amen. Amen. It's going to make my preaching better. Amen. Gonna make my living better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a, what a time. What a time. What a time. I, I remember, I remember, I remember a time when revivals were just packed, just you know, packed. And I, and I used to, I used to wonder why. I used to wonder why. And I, and I realized after I, after I, after I got grown, I, I realized why revivals were packed back in the day. Uh, they were packed because folk done gone through so much hell. When they heard a revival was coming town, that word revival meant something. I'm going to go get revived. I, if I got to go through, if I got to go between rocks and hard places and blessings and messes, then I'm going to go get revived. I'm, I'm going to go get, you know, revival is something that happens when you're on the way out, when you about to give up. And uh, we've been revived these three days. Amen. Amen. Just, amen. Just, a, just, a, if, if it's just a hundred of us, we've been revived. Amen. Uh, you be careful about going back around dead folk. Amen. Amen. Don't you let dead folk bring you back down from this revival. Amen. Amen. You tell them you should have been there. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I want to, I want to thank um, my brother, my friend, uh, Pastor Tarnase Watkins, amen, Cornerstone Community Church, amen. I want to thank our musicians for being in place, amen. Thank the ushers for being in place all three nights. These, these folks have just been here all three nights. All my deacons for being here, amen. And then you, New Jerusalem. Amen. This will make us better for the journey. This will make us better for the journey. Amen. 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 I do want to acknowledge Pastor Wanda Akles with us tonight. Amen. The New Direction Church down Denmark Street in Atlanta. Amen. My newest daughter in the ministry. Come to check on old Papa. Amen. Amen. And so it's always good to just be in the midst. We're going to go home now on this Friday night. Amen. Listen, if there are those that are going to go on the missions trip with us uh, in, um, to Shelby, uh, that's in July, is that in June? Amen. Wow, that's right around the corner. Amen. If you're going on that mission trip with us, we have training tomorrow morning beginning at 8 a.m. Amen. And, bring, and, 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 and come to stay. We're going to be here for a while because we got to know what we're going to do when we get there. Amen. Amen. And so if you are a part of that missions team that's going with us to Shelby, North Carolina, meet us here tomorrow morning, right early at eight. We're gonna have we're gonna have a few potato chips and and some um, you know some crackers, some water. Amen. And so y'all come on out. Amen. We gotta practice. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 I'm gonna ask Pastor Watkins if he'll come back now with our with final words and benediction uh, as we prepare to leave. Amen. Praise God as he comes. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. If you've been blessed tonight, would you just give him another hand clap of praise? Wow, what an honor it is to be here. And what an honor it is for God to show up in this place. Uh, his presence is truly in New Jerusalem. Amen. And there is a New Jerusalem coming. Amen, where we... Say howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. There is a new Jerusalem that's coming that when the lamb and the lion will be able to lie down together. There is a new Jerusalem that's coming 
where the sun will be no more. Uh, but the glory of the Lord shall illuminate. Good God Almighty. I can't wait to see the new Jerusalem. But until then, I'm going to hang around here. How about that? Is that all right? Amen. Again, I want to thank my godparents, Deacon Harris. Amen. Sister Harris. Amen. Amen. For the mighty journey that you made. Amen. Thank you for weathering the storm and coming up and being with us tonight. Amen. Amen. And you don't need but two sticks to start a fire. Right? Amen. Pastor, everybody ain't going. Amen. Everybody ain't going to make the trip. Amen. But I pray that you all be ready when he comes again. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, New Jerusalem. Thank you, musicians tonight. Amen. The choir. Amen. All of you for allowing us to come and be here with you tonight. I'm going to ask that you continue to pray for Cornerstone Community Church Atlanta. Amen. I continue to preach the word of God because that's what he sent me to do. Amen. I stopped worrying about crowds a long time ago. Amen. So just preach the word, preach the gospel in season and out of season. Amen. That we would be we found pleasing, pleasing in his sight. Amen. Can we stand tonight to be dismissed? Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Father, we thank you tonight for reviving us. We thank you, Lord God, for being with us tonight. God, we ask now, Lord God, that you bless this house. Bless the man and the woman of God over this house. We ask now, Lord God, that you bless them and bless them indeed. God, we ask now, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would be with us, walk with us, talk with us, direct us, protect us, and correct us, and be with us wherever we go. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, the one true wise God that's able to present us faultless before the throne of grace with exceeding joy. To him be power, dominion, honor, glory, and majesty forever and ever. Let the church say amen. 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 I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Y'all.